Hello again, everybody. Zach Attack is here with my TNA Impact Wrestling review for tonight, February the 9th, 2012. And, uh, TNA tonight, two decent matches, two okay matches. Like, the first two matches of the night were decent. Last two were okay, and adding some more fuel to the fire for uh, TNA against the Lodge this upcoming Sunday. So, uh, there you go. Uh, okay, you're back tonight from London. They didn't actually do any Star Wars shit like on the show. They like advertised Star Wars all night on Impact. They kind of like overdubbed it later. So there you go. There's no Star. No, there's no people in Star Wars costumes. Would make more sense. But since it was taped early, so they gonna do anything. Especially if it wasn't in Florida. So there you go. On with the show, which kicked off with Billy Ray coming out. Now last week, James Storm wrestled both Billy Ray and James. Uh, uh, and uh, Bobby Wood separately. Bully Ray helped Bobby Wood win his match against James Storm with a little trip. But then, while Bobby Wood was trying to help Bully Ray, he was chased out by Sting, helping James Storm defeat Bully Ray. Bully Ray was not too happy about James, about Bobby Wood not helping Bully when he needs it. Because Bully's like, listen, Bobby, I have your back. You should have mine. So, Bobby Roode comes out, talk about him being champion, saying he has his back. Doesn't matter what anyone says, and here comes Sting. Sting, of course, made the Fatal 4-Way, which will be Bobby Roode, Bully Ray, James Storm, and Jeff Hardy in a Fatal 4-Way for the title. I think Jeff Hardy, I know he was storyline injured, but I think the real reason why he's not in UK, he wasn't on this UK tour, probably had to do anything with his previous arrests. In UK is strict on people coming in the nation. They, they won't let a lot of people in. So probably they won't let Jeff Hardy in. So that's why you didn't see Jeff Hardy the last two weeks on Impact in UK. That's my mind. So sticking out that Fatal 4-Way, he'll be the special guest wing enforcer for this Fatal 4-Way title match. Special screwy situation with Bobby and Bully. But since Bobby and Bully have their own problems now, they're not getting along as well as after what happened last week. Sting made a main event which will be Sting and James Storm in a tag match against Bobby Wood and Bully Ray. Now, on with our first match tonight, which is AJ Styles versus Daniels. And you know Kazarian was going to be a big help for Daniels, and eventually was. Now these guys, Daniels and AJ, they're like, they're big innovators of the X Division. And any time they wrestle, you know they're going to put on a decent matchup. At least close to decent, let alone excellent. And I know you can compare this to any other match they've had. But once again, they prove once again why they have great chemistry. Great great physical matchup. Great back and forth action. AJ and Daniels, they never disappoint. You know, these two are probably two of the best guys in TNA of all time. Like two of the best veterans. Both are former tag champions together and separately. Former TNA X Division champions, both of them. But of course, as we all know, AJ is a former world champion. And Kaz was resistant most of the time, as we have been seeing, with Kaz being resistant to uh, Daniels. Daniels had a weapon, he gave it to Kaz, and he taught Kaz to get it through him, but that didn't happen until later on in the evening. And AJ, everything was going his way. AJ was. Funny back near the end with his, with a Pele, he would try many times for Styles Clash, but then Kaz reluctantly threw the brass knucks to uh, Christopher Daniels. He was about to be uh, powerbombed by AJ, weapon not looking. Daniels whammed AJ, one, two, three. Daniels with the weapon, thanks to Kaz, won the matchup. Like I said, this Kaz situation, we don't know much about it. Kaz has been reluctantly helping. Daniels made us something hanging over his head that we don't know about. Maybe we'll find out on Sunday as Kaz will wrestle AJ Styles in a match made by Daniels. So we'll see if the questions will finally get answered this Sunday at Against All Odds. Now on to our segment, next segment, which was involving Joe and Magnus. Now last week, Joe and Magnus sent a huge matches message to the TNA World Champions, Matt Morgan and Crimson, despite Jordan Magnus losing perspective one-on-one -on -one matches against Mag Morgan and Crimson, they defeated Morgan and Crimson in a non-title match last week on Impact, 
in wrestling. I think they did. I think, I think they did. It. And, uh, Jordan Magnus are getting a shot. Yes, they are going to get a shot against the team of Morgan and Crimson at the pay-per-view this Sunday. They talked about, about Magnus being from England and talked about how they're going to beat the crap out of Morgan and Crimson, be the couple new champions. Now, UK crowds are awesome, whether it's WWE TNA, and especially UK likes to cheer the old guy, despite being a bad guy. You can tell they're cheering Magnus a little much, and then Magnus referenced Morgan and Crimson, he got booed, especially when Morgan and Crimson came out eventually, they got booed heavily out of the arena. See what happens when the UK kind of makes the home brand turn against the good guys. They're supposed to cheer for them. And Magnus and Joe were waiting, and Crimson and Morgan came out, and they said, listen, talk is over, boo, they got into a little fight. And instead of Joe and Magnus taking control, it was Morgan and Crimson taking the advantage, beating the crap out of Joe and Magnus. Magnus was going to get a big move from uh, Morgan and Crimson, but Joe pulled Magnus out to make a nick of time. But basically, Joe saying, Magnus, just wait till Sunday, wait till Sunday. The tag team division's been stacked, you know, like I said, on various te my teenage reviews before, Magnus and Joe was like the brightest thing to fresh up the teenage tag division with Mexican American gone. He, he broke up because Shannon Moore's probably out and Jesse Neal got fired. We'll see Machine Guns all inactive right now with Alex Shelley back, but Chris Saban is, and I'll talk about Alex Shelley in a minute. And uh, so Magnus and Joe's bringing new light to the team and technical division that's stagnant with Magnus and Crimson and Morgan. But we'll see what happens with that match on Sunday. But we still need a lot more tag teams, not just in TNA, but in WWE as well. Now, like I mentioned, Alex Shelley. Now, Alex Shelley was in a triple threat against another British man. Doug Williams and a triple threat with Austin Aries, a non-title. As we all know, Austin Aries will defend his exhibition championship this Sunday against Alex Shelley. Where Alex Shelley sent a big message to Austin Aries by, yes, hitting the X Division Championship with a sliced bread. Alex Shelley, a huge match by Penn the champ, but overall this match was a pretty good matchup. You know, Doug Williams, his style is different than X Division, but still he, he, he adapted pretty well. Pretty back and forth matchup. Basically, it was like Aries getting double teamed by Williams and Shelly. And Shelly and Doug was really getting it on. There's some good hive spots, you know, some fly spots from all three guys. Austin flew on people. So did Alex and Doug. But it was, like I said, Shelly, after getting chaos theoried by Doug, like I said, getting the victory on Austin Aries after a slice spread attempt. Of course, Alex will get a shot against Austin. I hope Alex wins. Austin's held the title since that time where I think Alex is the biggest threat for Austin Aries. And it's great to see Shelly back in action. I hope Shelly gets the victory on Austin Aries again this Sunday. This time, winning the title this Sunday. Speaking of championships, let us to our next segment as the Knockouts champion, Gail Kim, had a little fight with Tara. Now, last week we saw Tara and Gail Kim in a non-title match. In UK with Tara getting the victory over Gail Kim in the title. Gail wasn't happy about it. So Gail attacked Tara on the streets of London. That's kind of cool. I think like a few weeks ago you saw that big brawl with Bully Ray, James Storm, and Jeff Hardy, and James and Bobby Wood all in the back in the parking lot area that erupted. Then Sting came in and helped out. It's kind of like that, but in London. With Gail Kim being the snot out of Tara in London Street, webbing against a concrete door and stuff, sending a message to Tara, heading towards their match this Sunday. Speaking of Sunday, a match was made during another segment as Hulk Hogan came out with Garrett Bischoff, talking about, you know, Garrett Bischoff trainer. Garrett Bischoff came out with Gunner, and Hogan said Sting, because Hogan and Sting had a conversation in the back. But we didn't hear the whole thing because Hogan made cameras go off. But Hogan announced that Sting gave him the power to make a match as Gunner would take on Garrett Bischoff. I think Eric will be in Gunner's corner and Hogan will be in Garrett's, I'm guessing. So you can expect some fireworks. Especially after what happened tonight with Gunner and Bischoff getting a cheap shot on Hogan and Garrett. Especially that low blow from Bischoff to Hogan. A little hand up his ass. Low blow. But Hogan and Garrett stuck back. Being a crap out of Gunner. Which led towards... Uh, Garrett punching the hell out of Eric Bischoff. 
you know, like I said, you expect the fireworks to blow with these four as Garrett will face Gano at against the odds. This storyline's okay, but it's like Hogan with Crimson is like weird. You know, with Garrett, it's weird. Um. Uh, now we are on to knockouts. Now, on knockouts, actually, I mentioned Tara, the number one contender. She defeated Mickey James and Velvet Sky in a triple threat match a few weeks ago to get the shot against Gail Kim. Well, Mickey and Velvet, since they're out of the town of Pitchell, for now, we had a one-on-one -on -one match with Mickey James and Velvet Sky tonight. Now, this match, like I said, I don't need to go through it many times. I've said it many times on the show before about comparing the knockouts to WWE Divas. I don't need to go through that. I have said it on every video I've done for wrestling, so we don't need to hear it again. But, knockouts again, decent matchup, you know. Velvet Sky's a good wrestler, you know, she's okay. Mickey James, what can I say, probably one of the best female wrestlers in TNA, WWE, sad that we left her out. So, decent back and forth match with Mickey James, taking control, Velvet, like, mixed crowd reception. Mostly everyone was cheering on Velvet, you know, got some Pigeons fans, but... Mickey tried to move, you know, it's a decent okay matchup with Mickey James getting pinned by a roll up by Velvet for the victory. So Velvet got a win over Mickey James. Mickey wasn't happy about it. Maybe Mickey turned heel? We don't know. But uh, Mickey's not been here yet in TNA since he's been there. I think she's been like there for two years. So, but Velvet gets the victory over Mickey in a decent back and forth matchup. And maybe Velvet may stake her claim for another title shot against whoever wins this Sunday with Gail and Tara. Now, on to our main event of the evening, which is a tag team matchup. Sting and James Storm teaming up against Bully Ray and Bobby Roode. We can tell Bobby and Bully Ray's problems have not solved tonight. As a little squabble, they had Bully and Bobby Roode was showing each other that they have each other's backs. In this match, this main event was just okay matchup. Sting wrestled a bit. Storm wrestled for a bit. And uh, Storm's been dominating over Bobby Roode and all of them. Sending a message to Bobby and Bully for this Sunday as they head towards a fatal four way. You know, and Bully Roode tried to cheat many times. He used. He tried to use a steel chain and a chair, but he wouldn't roughly stop them every time. But then came the ending. Steam came in like a house of fire, attacking both Bully and and Wood. Delivered the Scorpion Death up to Bobby Wood. They delivered a Scorpion Death luck to Wood. And Bully Ray came out with the TNA belt. He was going to ram Sting with it and have Wood's back as always. He was like, what are they? He held back with the belt. It said, see you in three days, champ. Walked away, and Sting got the victory for him and Storm, thanks to Bully Ray allowing it to happen instead of helping Bobby. So Sting and Storm got the victory, with Storm sending a huge message to to not only Bully Ray and Bobby, but also Jeff Hardy, because it's going to be every man for himself this Sunday in a fatal four-way. So we'll see what happens in the situation. But my opinion, I hope it's not Bully Ray. You know, I don't think it's Bully Ray, Bubba Ray, whatever his name is, whatever you want to call him. You know, it's a decent tag team wrestler with Diva, T3D, Bob, uh, Dully Boys. His heel thing, Bully Ray, yeah, I like it, you know, but it kind of reminds me of one man gun. He's kind of copying one man gun. You know, he's got the, you know, so it's got to be the big boy. You know, that's his thing. And uh, I don't see him as more heavy champion material. You mean, I don't think he's going to be a top heel. Like, Bobby Roode is a great hero for a champion. He was a great he was a great hero when he came in as you know, the money guy with Tracy Brooks. But his new heel now is more narcissistic, more egotistical, more cocky guy. And he's as great as a heel champion as Austin Aries has been. But while Austin Aries is needing to lose the title, I don't think Bobby's going to lose it anytime soon. To anybody. I don't care if it's Storm or Hardy. But I think Bobby Wood will retain the championship on Sunday, but I will be su I will not be surprised if he loses, especially I won't be surprised if it's Bully Ray causing him to lose to Hardy or Storm, not Bully Ray pinning Bobby Roode. Because like I said, I don't think Bully Ray is the top guy to... I don't think he's... Like, I know he's been in the best of so long, but I just don't think he's a probable champion. 
You know, they can try to make him a good champion, but I just don't think he's going to be a great singles champion. They do give him the war title. I just don't think. But Bully Ray, logical. But if they do give him a title, I'll try to give him a chance. But I just don't think if Bully Ray does win the title this Sunday, I just don't think he'll do well. But time will tell. Especially heading towards Sunday against the odds. Uh, that's it for my TNA review. I hope uh, everyone had a great night tonight. Like I said, decent impact from UK. To be back in Orlando for the next couple weeks to come. You know, I like when they go on the road. You know, at least the fans are better. You know, if you did tape in Orlando, it's so small. Plus, you get people from the theme park. You know, like, ooh, wrestling's here. Just coming just to watch it. Not just because the fans. Just because it's there. You know. I know WCW was in Universal and Disney, but this is different. But, but like I said, the London shows have been decent. You know, the crowds are decent. I'm glad they got a big crowd. So, we'll see what happens if TNA takes impact more on the world. Not just in UK, but also more states besides just Tennessee and Georgia. That is it for, like I said, that's it for my review. Thank you all very much. That's been attacked. Bottom review from Zach. Have a good night. See you all later. Bye-bye. Yeah.